Sitting in the campfire light Staring at the flames on a starless night Heat from the embers soak my jeans Warms my skin As the darkness warms my heart when teenagers invite 17 year old Terry Lee Hurst camping, the excitement he felt would turn into a nightmare when he becomes the prey and is hunted to death. This murder was so brutal that a song was wrote about this true crime case. Hello, my name is Holly, and this is the murder she shed. Sit back, have a snack, there's a lot to unpack in this rarely discussed true crime case. Before we begin, just make sure you smash that subscribe button. So you can come visit me and that little guy, Simon, back there. He's often in the she shed with me, and we just tell true crime together. Well, he does a lot of whining while I tell true crime. That's how it goes. So just make sure you smash the subscribe button, and we'll be here for you, usually two times weekly. 17-year-old Terry Lee Hurst was born and raised in Sheffield in the UK. He was diagnosed with autism along with a speech impediment. And although he was 17, he had a mental age of around 13, which frequently made him a target of bullying. Despite that, he was an outgoing, vibrant young man, heavily involved with the local church and always ready to lend a helping hand. Everyone knew him as a good Samaritan. He loved camping and adventures in the great outdoors. Terry had started living with his foster parents around the age of two before he started attending Sheffield College and living near the college while he was attending it. This is where he would meet three teens that would take his life in the most disturbing and brutal way. 15-year-old Rebecca Peters and 17-year-old John Sodden had both been born and raised in Sheffield and also attended Sheffield College. That's how they met him. They were both known to the police. John had been previously convicted of petty theft, and his adoptive parents would say he was prone to outbursts of violence when he lost his temper. Rebecca was a heavy drinker known for her belligerent, unruly behavior when she was drunk. We all know that girl. We've all seen that girl. They often hung out with another local boy, Jermaine James, who was known as a troubled youth. Jermaine had been thrown out of his family home at the age of 16 and just left to fend for himself. John hated Terry because he had previously dated his current girlfriend. So I guess that gave him a right to hate Terry. I don't know. Weird reasons people hate people. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, he didn't know you was going to date her. So I guess it's his fault because he didn't see the future. John Sodden had been known to make threats to people about what he would like to do to Terry and mentioned he would like to kill him. Rebecca had made a comment to a friend one day, have you seen Terry's hair? It's scraggy, isn't it? I'm going to end up killing him someday. If these threats had been told to a teacher at college, would it have saved Terry's life? I'm not sure. But I do think threats like these should not be blown off as these students did. I don't know if it would have made a difference, but if you hear something, say something. The three friends decided to set up a camping trip and invite Terry, who was very excited about the possibility of making new friends and also a camping trip. Terry's autism caused them to be naive and innocent to their evil plans. They must have known that Terry wouldn't say no to a camping trip since it was something he loved to do. So on July 19, 2004, the three friends and Terry walked about a mile to Broomhead Reservoir, where they set up camp. After Terry fell asleep in the tent that evening, the other three friends then walked to John's house and just began drinking alcohol, perhaps to get the nerves up to do what they had planned. On their return journey, they passed the graveyard at St. Mary's Church, where they broke into the garden shed there and stole two agricultural shies. They then headed back to camp with their Grim Reaper tools. The Grim Reaper uses the scythe to harvest the souls of the dead. Tonight, the friends would use them sadly to harvest one soul. When they arrived at Terry's tent and opened it, they began dragging him out by his ankles. 
Terry only had his boxer shorts and socks on and nothing to protect him. Can you imagine Terry's shock to open his eyes and see his supposed friends standing above him like grim reapers? Then the attack began. They started kicking him and stomping on him. Terry was suddenly able to get to his feet and run. He ran for his life and they chased Terry through the forest like predators chasing their prey. They caught up with him and then began slashing and stabbing him repeatedly with the shites. Terry's hands became shredded trying to protect himself from their attacks. They paused to let Terry get up. They craved another chase. It was an adrenaline rush for these three monsters. After catching Terry this time, a bag was placed over his head. Then they began to stomp his head with their feet and also drop bricks on his head. His mouth was stomped on so hard that it forced Terry's teeth down his throat and his jaw was so smashed it just hung open. The final blow came from Rebecca when she embedded the scythe into his skull, killing him. Terry had been tortured to death all because he just wanted to make new friends and go camping. The three friends then dragged his body to a ditch and left it there. Rebecca stole Terry's shoes from the tent and walked back to her house with Terry's shoes on and her two besties by her side. I'm going to call them beasties. And her two beasties by her side. When they arrived at Rebecca's house, her mom made them all a bacon sandwich because that's what you crave after you beat somebody to death. They ate their sandwiches while laughing and having a good time. Terry's body was discovered by a farmer the very next day. Shocked detectives describe his injuries as the worst they had ever seen. The trio, Rebecca and her beasties, were instant suspects and were immediately arrested. They all admitted taking part in Terry's murder. They weren't even ashamed enough to hide the attack. Terry had over 80 wounds to his body. The trio of killers left the largest scythe embedded in Terry's neck, and it went up into his head. These are the real scythes that they used. The last picture is the one that is broken off from being embedded into his skull. In January 2005, all three pled guilty to murder and were sentenced to life. Unfortunately, in the UK, life does not mean life. Jason Sodden would be eligible for parole after 15 years. Rebecca Peters and Jermaine James after only 13 years. Rebecca Peters was released in 2016, 10 months early because of good behavior. I could not find the release date of the other two beasties. John Sodden's cousin, who is Ollie Sykes, the lead vocalist for the British rock band Bring Me the Horizon, wrote and sings a song called Don't Go, which is wrote about the murder of Terry by his cousin. The song is emotional and raw, and you feel the emotions come out when Ollie is on stage singing Don't Go. I cannot play it due to copyright laws, but here are the lyrics. I was raised in the valley. There was shadows and death. Got alive, but with scars I can't forget. This kid back in school, subdued and shy. An orphan and a brother, and unseen by most eyes. I don't know what it was that made a piece of him die. Took a boy to the force, slaughtered him with a scythe. Stamped on his face, an impression in the dirt. Do you think the silence makes a good man convert? We all have our horrors and our demons to fight. But how can I win when I'm paralyzed? They crawl up on my bed, wrap their fingers around my throat. Is this what I get for the choices that I made? God forgive me for all my sins. God forgive me for everything. May you rest in peace, Terry Lee Hurst. I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you around sometime a couple of days, and Simon says bye. I'm going to attempt to say happy Thanksgiving on this blooper reel, although this video will not be probably put out till after Thanksgiving because I'm just being lazy and making fudge and eating fudge and 
That's what happens. Start eating fudge. You just get all lazy and fat. No worry about the rest of the world, and I apologize. But anyway, happy Thanksgiving. If you're from America, if you're not, I mean, I think what I read, y'all still celebrate some kind of Thanksgiving, but it's like in October if you're not from some places, some other countries do. But it, it's Thanksgiving, but it's in October, and well, it's not the same as the American holiday, but some people still have a Thanksgiving. Anyway, so happy late Thanksgiving if yours was in October. I'm trying to be nice and say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Whether yours was in October or November, I'm here for you, or if it's in June, whatever, be thankful for what you have every month, and then we'll be good. Which frequently made him a target of bullying. And I absolutely hate bullying. Everybody's different, and I don't understand why kids want to bully somebody that's just a little different than them. That's what makes the world go around. If we were all the same, this would be a boring world. Everybody's got something to give to the world. So bullying, please don't do that if you're young. But what I know, I'm just an old broad that's already lived 50 years. Unruly behavior when she was drunk. We all know that girl. We've all seen that girl. I'm not belligerent. I'm just a happy drunk. Just get come really happy. That's beside the point. Just ignore that. Put that in the boop, booper. The boop. The boober reel. The booper reel. Put it in the boob reel. I don't have a boob reel. I'm sorry. You're at the wrong show if you think there's a boob reel. He didn't know you was going to date her. So, guess it's his fault because he didn't see the future. I don't know. Stole two agriculture shites. Shites. That's very hard to say. And in fact, I was bullied in high school. I'm not kidding. I really was. I was a nerd. I'm still a nerd, I guess. Me and my cousin both were bullied. And odd enough, it was by a dude. I know, that's weird. A dude was speaking on us. I can't remember if it was junior high or I was like a freshman or a sophomore. I want to say I'm a, me and my cousin were a freshman or something like that. And I think the guy that bullied us was either a sophomore or a junior. And every day we put up with it. Every day we were patient. And you know, one day I just had enough. I was like, I told my cousin, I said, I can't stand this anymore. I'm going to explode. And I'm the kind of person that I hold things in and hold things in and then suddenly it just massively explodes. Well, I'm sure the guy was like thinking I was crazy after this because he never messed with me again. He came up and I don't remember what he said to me that day. Whatever it did, it just blew my top. Not literally blew my top off, but you know, made me mad. This top. I don't know where that went. Anyway, so he's walking past me or he's coming this way and I'm walking the opposite way and he says something to me and my cousin and I'm like okay my heat just went you know those moments where you feel all the heat go to your head well my heat went to my head it just pissed me off so bad and so when he walked past me and said what he said and I can't even remember now all I remember is I grabbed a hold of him he's a lot taller than me yeah this is this boy that was a lot taller than me I grabbed hold of him and I literally had the strength of Samson you know in the Bible Samson because I took the boy who was bigger and taller than me and slammed him into the locker so hard I think the locker dented in I don't even know. I just slammed him so hard into that locker. I mean, and it rang down the hallways. Ding! I was like, what was that? And he looked at me, and you know what he did? He walked off with a red face and deep shame. And you know what? He never messed with us again. I'm not saying be violent, but sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. And... Never violence, though. Never. I mean, like, kids these days are taking, you know, what, to school. Nothing like that. Just something subtle that gets your point across. Like, you're not going to mess with me again. Sometimes that's the only way you can stop this. Just take up for yourself. Even if it's just from words, you know. You just got to defend yourself sometimes. And from that day forward, 
He never even looked at me again. <laughs> My other two dogs will eat these pork treats. He hates them. He despises them. All he wants is a ball. Yeah. It's been sitting in my she shed for a while now. We love y'all. Bye. Sitting in the campfire light, staring at the flames on a starless night. Heat from the embers soak my jeans. Warms my skin as the darkness warms my heart. 